for many years. Learn more about their medical team, all of their on-site services at SOSMed.org. Seacoast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in Summersworth and in Lee. Really quiet, huh? Must be coming out on the other end, though, pretty good. Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice to adjust the return. So they're missing one of their top scorers, Fossier. Eight goals. this all right thanks pete thank you dan that's more on the black bears and when we come back we'll scan hockey east look at the scoreboard as everybody's in action today some some tournaments and whatnot so some interesting scores to pass along to you here from manchester this is wildcat hockey from learfield Red Sox. <clears throat> I'm a Liverpool guy. Yeah. I watched some play uh, this week. Yeah, it was a good win. Yeah. yeah. That rare occasion they gave up the first goal and came back and I, I wish uh, I wish we could get some <clears throat> info as to what they're actually doing with the stadium and <clears throat> in the neighborhood there. Because I know when I was there four years ago, <clears throat> four and a half years ago, I knew John Henry had bought it. I said there was a couple of streets of row houses that were totally abandoned, decrepit and abandoned. He said he is going to see this 
and, and he's going to do something like the three Yaki way outside of Fenway. And uh, They've been doing something with that stadium there. Counting you down to the Riverstone Classic 2016 UNH against Maine. Hockey East rivals, but not Hockey East points on the line. Let's take a look at the rest of the Across Hockey East scoreboard brought to you by your local cross insurance agency. All right, we got a whole bunch of games uh, and a few of them uh, going on now. And well, we have one final already in as the UMass Lowell Riverhawks have pulled off a 3 2 victory over Colgate. So good win there for the Riverhawks. That's an opponent the Wildcats are going to see next Friday night at the Whittemore Center. Boston College is uh, in a battle against Ferris State, and uh, that game is at one nothing Ferris State into the third period. So Boston.
this for so long, and I've seen no pattern whatsoever as to what happens in these games. It, uh, usually it's just who's going to make a mistake that's going to be critical and somebody's going to take advantage, usually early. All right, well, the Wildcats are going right to left as the puck has been dropped, and we are underway. Glad you're with us tonight, Black Bears. Byron gets it tipped off. His stick goes into the New Hampshire zone behind the net. Cam Marks gets to it for the Wildcats, using the far dasher to clear it to center ice. And now a two-on-one developing. McNils McNicholas moves in right side across to Salvaggio. He shoots and he scores! It takes just 28 seconds. for about three weeks. That was just a perfect pass right on Salvaggio. He had all day to corral the puck, to caress it, to say hi to it, and he just puts it in the back of the net, and we get to see the fish real early here tonight. And it's being skated off behind the main net just to rub it in to Rob McGovern, and it's Enviro Vantage to the rescue, your one-stop resource for environmental cleanup. Proud to be an official partner of Wildcat Sports. Visit EnviroVantage.com to learn more. Salvaggio, the junior from Hanson, Massachusetts, his 10th goal of the season. McNicholas with his 10th assist. You had just said it, Peter. Who makes a mistake early? And Maine surrenders that two-on-one. Now the Black Bears carry the puck behind the Wildcat net. Miller able to take it away, though, as he trips up Patrick Shea, talented freshman from Marshfield, Mass. It's behind the net outside the trapezoid that they have here at the SNHU Arena. Along the near boards, Van Riemsdyk pushes it out to center. Blackburn. Blackburn looking for Grasso off the far wall. This will go behind the net for an icing call against the Cats. Just 103 into the first. Wow. Now there's a pass that you would expect to see being the first shift back from vacation, back from the break. Just, you know, six inches, eight inches off. Grasso couldn't get a stick on, and it goes for an icing. Comes all the way back in your end for an important faceoff. Lacroix and Blackburn, the faceoff to Taroni's right. Puck still in that faceoff circle, taking a slap at it was Perez. It gets knocked back to the point through. Traffic gets sent in by Sam Becker, and that one got deflected to the far wall. Then it's covered up by Taroni on the carom. Yeah, there's a good play by uh, Lacroix to try to just backhand it a blind pass to get it out in front, perhaps find his line mate on the far side. But Danny Taroni very smartly getting that big paddle down on the ice, not allowing the pass to go through. Won't go as a save, but it's a very important stop there, taking over that pass. Man wins the draw, sharp angle shot, and a score from the left boards. It was triggered from just along the boards, and Maine has tied the score 1-1 with 18.44 remaining in this first period. Well, Ryan Smith is going to get credit for it. He's a freshman out of Virginia. Not too many players come out of Roanoke, Virginia, but uh, he had a screen out in front of Taroni. Daniel Perez was there with a Wildcat defender. I don't think Danny saw that at all. It just came right through those dark blue jerseys. And, well, we're all tied up now. Yeah, the key is Sam Becker kept the puck in the zone off the faceoff along the left point, and then right along the boards it was sent in. And we point out, not much for Taroni there, a lot of traffic in front of him. So the quick equalizer for Maine, and we're off and running here. Just a minute and a half into this one, there's already been two goals scored. Iserman at center ice. Pass along to the right side, get Cephalou coming into the zone. From the edge of the circle, he'll fire one in on the wrist, and it's kept by McGovern for a save and a faceoff. Yeah, you hate to say it, just that icing call that brought the whole play back into the Wildcat zone. And there was another faceoff in the Wildcat zone, and that was the one that the Black Bears scored off of. So try to keep those faceoffs out of your own end if you can, especially on icing calls. The goal by Salvaggio at 28 seconds of the first. McNicholas credited with the first assist. The second assist, Tyler Kelleher, his nation's leading 20th assist of the year. On the faceoff, McNicholas right side against Cam Brown, captain for Maine. Goes into the corner, McNicholas digging after it in the right corner. Hamilton there for Maine. And it's McNicholas still battling along the half wall. Maine will get out of the zone. Comes off the near dasher, back to his own blue line. Cleland will backhand across to the far side, Marks. Marks leads to McNicholas, bouncing around the Monarchs logo at center ice. Byron, and Byron leads it for Brown. Brown gains the zone, looking for a centering feed. Coming across Byron, he goes backhand with it, right through the crease and up against the far boards before being sent to center by Cleland. 1-1 one, one our score, 17-40 left in the first period. Byron comes into the Wildcat end, runs into Cleland. Marks takes it away, uses the net, and goes around the other side of the right Brings it to Kelleher at center ice. Poke checked away from him. And now Maller just onto the ice. Works it to Anthony Wise. Left side. Wise crosses to the red line and fires into the right wing corner. 
Wildcats in the midst of a change, so they back off, and this gives the Black Bears a chance to come to center. Surehammer's pass on the diagonal, gets Pearson coming into the zone. Three on two, out in front, backhand shot by Pearson, save to Roney, puck still loose in the blue paint, very dangerous, few Black Bears hovering as Shea was there, Pierce, Pearson was there, as was Surehammer, but finally a whistle and a face-off upcoming. Wow, dangerous moments there for the Wildcats as a little uh, angle pass out at center ice, kind of got into the skates of Dylan Maller. And before he knew it, he had a Black Bear stick on him, and it turned into a good bit down low. Taroni coming up with a good one-on-one -on -one save in tight in the blue paint. And it all broke out in front of him, but Danny managed to get a good whistle. Cats win the faceoff, come racing out of the zone. Justin Fergona tries to backhand to Nazarian, and his shot lifts high off the crossbar and over to the glass. Nice dish from Miller to Nazarian there as the Wildcats third line, along with Justin uh, Fergona, Miller, and Nazarian working hard. Main comes the other way, backhanded by Smith across the way. No one home. Black Bears keep it in, though, as it's sent behind the net by Becker from the left side. Maller back there with Perez. Black Bears get it. It's Smith, sends it back out. Here's one that's tipped and deflected wide to the short side. Wise gets to it in the near corner. Two Black Bears collide into him as he works it to Maller on the far side, and the Wildcats will break it out. Chris Miller at center ice. Angles left, gains the zone, leaves it back to the trailer Nazarian. His quick shot right into the glove of McGovern, and that brings a whistle. 16-20 to go in the first. We're tied at one. The goal by Smith that equalized the score at 1-16 of the first. Assist has been given to Cedric Lacroix. How about that? One goal for each team in the first minute and 16 seconds. We're going to have one of those shootouts here tonight. Be like the OK Corral. I'll have to look up when that Dartmouth shootout was. I don't know what it was, like 9-8 one year. Well, last year, all the shooting came from the Wildcats. Dartmouth are making Maine unable to even find the back of the net as Toroni shut them out in that 7 nothing win. Different story so far this year. Pass goes behind the intended recipient, Blackburn, as the Wildcats had it on the main end of the ice. But it's taken away. And skating out of trouble, Mubal. Man looks to move to center ice. Touch pass from Pearson. Skating pass it with Shea. And it's still loose in the neutral zone. Surehammer, his shot deflected off the stick of Blackburn, goes to the far left wall. Chanter will chop at it, move it back to the neutral zone, and Maine backs it up. Surehammer on the near side to our left. The alternate captain skates a little farther back, deeper in his own zone. Mubal looking to go back to Surehammer. Onto the ice, Malcolm Hayes, fourth line, right wing. And it gets lifted into the netting above the glass behind Taroni. And with 15.30 to go in the first, we'll take our first time out. UNH1, main one. You're listening to Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. Three on two on side, shot comes on the left side, stick to side by Taroni. A follow-up shot from Hayes came from the right half wall, and Taroni sealed off there as well. Taroni put his arm up, thinking the puck had hit the net, but play continues behind the Wildcat cage. As Marks moves it to Cleland, Maine goes for a change and gives the Cats room. Headman pass to Iserman, he'll just tip it forward and play it behind the main net. McGovern wraps it around to the far boards. We're at 1-1, 14-40 and counting here in the first period from Manchester. Hamilton from Maine on the pass near side Byron. Byron comes across the blue line to the Wildcat zone. Trying to get around Wise. Get some help from Brown. Brown plays it back. A one-timer fired in by Patrick Hallway. Save to Roney. Hallway gets back to it along the right boards. Behind the net, Byron. Byron comes in front trying to stuff near post, but Taroni able to cover up. Puck was still loose after Taroni sealed the post. It's over to Brown. Left wing up top. One timer that was blocked down to Byron. Byron fires one from the low angle right side. Another stop by Taroni. Being peppered here, but he's been up to the challenge since the goal earlier by Smith. Yeah, there's a lot of energy being expended there by the first line of the main Black Bears. Here comes Byron again. He tees one up and a slap shot that's gloved by Taroni, and we'll have another face off with 13.50 left in the first period. The shots on goal starting to really creep in Maine's favor. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that line with Byron and Cam Brown, 
Both those players putting up some really good numbers against AIC before the break. Now that's the line. Brett Jenneran is going to want out on the ice for good chunks. He might go short shift in other lines and then want that line out there for a little extra. Right, Wildcats get into the main zone. Nazarian in the right corner. Up to the point, Marks. Marks works it to the left point. Cleveland. Cleveland throws one in front. And that sailed high, hits off the glass. Marks tries to chip it forward to keep it in the zone, but Maine's able to clear. And on the carom, Cleveland comes back to the left face-off circle of his own zone. Goes across the way to Marks. Marks diagonal feed for Nazarian. Deflects off his stick and is swatted right back out to center by the Black Bears. Miller, from just outside the main zone, sends in. McGovern comes out of the crease. Leaves it behind the net, and the Black Bears try to use the far wall to clear to center ice, and they're successful before it's sent back in by the Wildcats, who go for a change. We're seven minutes into the first period, and a lot of action in the first minute, 16, with each team scoring a goal, and that's where we stand now at 1-1. Chanter in his own zone, can't control. Behind the net to Richard Boyd. Boyd gives the Van Reem cycle on the near side, and now Blackburn goes by Michael. Blackburn comes into the zone left wing side. His wrist shot got tipped by Hamilton to Karam just to the right, and out of the reach of so the goaltender. Comes back out to Chanter. He tries to fire a shot from the right side. Blocked down. Blackburn goes after it along the end boards. And now it's sent to the left wing boards. And Maine's able to get it to center ice. Boyd plays it back into the main zone. But no Wildcats are there. Uh, flurry by the Cats. Liam Blackburn made a nice move out at center ice. Looked like there was going to be a two-on-one situation. But some good hustle by Maine. Back checker really made it a two-on-two. Maller tries to thread the needle to Van Riemsdyk, but it's broken up on the near boards. And still loose there as the Cats bring in some new skaters, and Maine will come out of it. As Kusakas got to the puck, there's a Maine icing call. 12.01 to go in the first. UNH1 Maine 1. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. One 11:35 to go. First period. Mike Murphy, Pete Webster, back at the SNHU Arena in Manchester. Puck behind the Wildcat net. Anthony Wise tries to work free of two Black Bears on the near side. Salvaggio goes across the rink, but it's intercepted by Byron, who keeps it in the Wildcat zone. Plays it down to Brown. Goal line extended left. His centering feed intercepted by Salvaggio on the stick of Maller, and now Wise. Wise to Kelleher at center. Kelleher got cut off as he ran into Byron at the red line. The Wildcats are going to be whistled for the first penalty as Salvaggio got tangled up and ended up taking down Brendan Robbins. Yeah, Tyler Kelleher trying to make a little move out at center ice right at the Monarch logo. Well, he was stood up there and looked like it might turn into a good break by Maine coming the other way. So Salvaggio hacked down the player. I mean, uh, making sure that they get enough energy with numbers back they like uh, tonight they're looking like they like four guys between the center ice red line here's a steal off the face off it's Shane Eiserman Eiserman on a breakaway shoots he scores short handed goal Shane Eiserman and the Wildcats take a two to one lead well how do you like that Shane Eiserman playing on the fourth line he's had a number of breakaways this year and I don't know this might be the first one he buries but Boy, he had a goal scorer's touch that, lifting it up over the shoulder of Robert Govern. Clean breakaway from center ice. This goes right up over the blocker shoulder. Good goal by Shane Eisman. Cats lead 2 1. Third short handed goal of the season for the Wildcats. Tyler Kelleher with one, Jason Salvaggio with one. And for Eisman, the junior from Newburyport, Mass., his third goal of the season, although this one is now under official review. Yeah, they're going to take a look at it. It came out awfully quick. I didn't hear any clang on the, on the pipe. And uh, Shane seemed to think it uh, went in, and so did Rob McGovern. Right off the faceoff, which was to the left of Taroni, Eiserman had the steal, the blue line, and then he was off to the races showing great acceleration. And he finished. 
for Iserman, his first goal, if it stands, since November 10th against Arizona State. His other tally came at UMass October 28th, and you might hear the roar of the crowd here. It has been confirmed as a good goal by referee Chris Millay. Well, so that should be an unassisted tally there as Shane Eisenman had the takeaway. Going to be here in Manchester where Jamie Staten of WMUR right in his backyard comes over to give us a high five, Peter. We're not going to change right, that yeah. often. But he's in a good mood for the holidays as well. And good to have the Wildcats in town. He's about as big a Wildcat hockey fan as you're going to find. So 2-1 to one in favor of UNH. 10-40 and counting left here in this first period. Black Bears coming the other way. Michael enters the cat zone along the right boards. He sends one just wide of the net, and it goes to the far corner. Byron controls it at the point, moves it to Michael, right wing. Michael into the circle. His pass tipped by Cleland, goes a rink wide, and Marks is able to send it to center. Van Riemsdyk got a piece of it, so even as it goes down the ice, there's no threat of icing. And Maine has to retreat. Byron breaks out, long feed, comes to center ice. Reception made by Chase Pearson. Pearson crosses the line. Michael gets spilled to the ice, trying to backhand centering feed, but it comes back out to Michael at the right point. Left side, Byron. Byron flips one in, but it's blocked down by Maller. Tries to clear it out. Gloved down by Byron, and then poked away by Kelleher. Kelleher comes into the zone right side. He passes across McNicholas, whose shot didn't have much on it, and a save is made by a sprawling Rob McGovern. Yeah, the defenseman Rob Michael uh, slid over it. Kind of the right time on Tyler Kelleher, and uh, Kelleher had to pass the puck across ice a little bit late, later than he really wanted to in that situation. And it kind of got uh, stuck behind Salvaggio a little bit. It might have actually got off his skate towards the goaltender. But McGovern covered it up there. Good excitement there for the Wildcats. As they're still on the shorthand. That's right. We're neglected to say that if I tend to forget there are 35 seconds left on the Salvaggio penalty. So Maine has already given up one goal on this power play, and they almost gave up another shorthanded. It was a great look from Kelleher to McNicholas, but didn't get much on the shot. Here's Eisman, who had the first shorthanded tally. Comes into the main zone again, and the Black Bears break it up. But this has been a discombobulated power play, to say the least, for Maine. Trailing 2-1. to one. Getting to the Wildcat line was Hallway, and he'll wrap it behind the net to the left boards. It's on the stick of Marks, and Marks will be able to easily move up ice and clear it down. Yeah, that's all you wanted there. Uh, you know, as you said that, Mike, I was thinking all it takes is one uh, awkward shot and it gets by the goalie. And your power play looks like an uh, all-world. Well, the penalty is over, but the Black Bears come into the zone. Jake Papalardo from Salem, New Hampshire, has it along the left wing boards. Works it near hot side. Sherham puts it out in front, tipped once. Going after it was Hosakos in the paint, but covering it up was Taroni, and he gets the whistle. That leads to our timeout, 8.50 remaining. In the first, UNH on goals by Salvaggio and Iserman with a 2-1 lead over Maine. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. the first 11 minutes and 10 seconds of the first period. And compete the live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics in just 11 months. Earn a Master's of Science degree in analytics at UNH. Their highly innovative program uses real-world data from actual companies. Find out more at unh.edu slash analytics. Wildcats with a 2-1 lead coming right to left as Matthias Cleland sends a tester in from outside the blue line. McGovern able to close the pads, make the stop and Maine looks to come the other way in transition. VC goes across the way, a shot that didn't have much on it 
off the stick of Muehlbauer. Goes behind the Wildcat net. Played in front looking for VC. Nolan VC, property of the Toronto Maple Leafs. His brother now skating for the New York Rangers. Blackburn outside the main zone comes in. His left hand forehand shot goes into the corner. Didn't have much on that. It's backhanded behind the net by Sam Becker. Works out to the right wing boards and Maine is able to dig it out. As we cross the eight minute mark remaining in this first period. Big hit by Wise to slow down Smith, the main goal scorer this evening. Taroni slows it down behind the net. Maller looking for the home run pass. Can't connect to Van Riemsdyk. It wraps all the way around for an icing call. Yeah, it's uh, getting a little too much air on that one. Uh, too hot for Van Riemsdyk to handle and it's, it's going to be an icing call here. Be careful, you don't want to have too many of these down here. Maine off, uh, awfully good off the face off. They come out with their number one line. It's going to be uh, faced off by Blaine Byron. Yeah, Byron and McNicholas. McNicholas wins the draw as Maller is able to work it to Van Riemsdyk. He'll center it, and Kelleher gets to it. Quick dish to McNicholas across the line. Forehand shot blocked Michael into the left wing corner. Wise tries to pinch it along the boards to keep it in, but now it's controlled by the Black Bears. Cam Brown. Brown gets all the way to the Wildcat zone. In the corner, Roberts plays one off the side of the net. Robbins gets back to it. Left goal line extended. Out to Hamilton at the point. Hamilton works it up the wall for Brown. Maller tries to seal him off the play. In the corner, Byron. Byron on the cycle. Works into the left wing circle. His backhand bid. Knocked down by McNicholas. Comes back to Michael. Again, McNicholas a block shot as Michael sent one in. And it's worked to the far side by Wise. Kelleher's feed. Too far from McNicholas. Stolen by Byron. It's still in the Wildcat zone on the right wing boards. Robbins. Back to Michael. Michael from the high slot. His shot goes wide off the near post. Looking to go upstairs in Toronto. Michael again from the point. Works it to Byron. Right wing half wall. Byron bottom of the circle. Reverses direction. Sends it to the point. Michael can't keep in. Salvaggio tried to duck around him and take the puck away. But Michael regrouped. Boy, Blaine Bryan is so, so uh, dangerous there when he gets in tight spaces. Uh, the little curls that he makes going around in little circles, just eluding uh, anybody who's trying to dispossess him of the puck. Behind the net, it's Perez battling with Wise in the Wildcat zone. Jamie Hill, a Cephalu chop, chop at it, and Hill comes away with the puck. Skates past the both benches along the right wing boards. Comes into the main zone and ran into Eric Scherhammer in the corner. There's a tough shot fired in from just outside the zone, uh, by outside the circle rather, by Cephalu. Stop made by McGovern. Cephalu backhands into the main zone and takes a hit from Smith for his troubles. Goes behind the net where Patrick Hallway tries to backhand it. Knocked down by the Wildcats who stole it in the slot. Couldn't get a shot off. A main player lost the stick. Cephalu looking for Iserman left wing circle. Can't handle the pass. And it comes back out to Chanter. Chanter at the left point. Looked to play it down low but it's picked off by Hallway. And it comes the other way. Here's a slap shot from just inside the red line by Smith. That forces a Taroni saves. Allows Maine to make a change. Boy, outlet pass finds Miller. Miller streaks into the zone left wing. He'll backhand it along the left boards in the corner for Nazarian. Nazarian and Fragona converge right along the end boards. It's played back to the point. Cleland tries to keep in, and he's successful. He'll backhand it deeper into the corner. Nazarian behind the net. Fragona. He surveys, gets to the left circle. He played one that gets, gets tipped by a main player who was in the crease. You never know. Sometimes those deflections will go your way. In this case, it comes out of the zone. Five minutes left, first period. Wildcats two, Black Bears one. Goals by Salvaggio and Eisman. Shane's was a shorthanded tally. Fragona comes in to the main end. Pass behind the goal line for Nazarian, looking to return it to Fragona, left corner. It's pressed up against the glass by Becker. Robbins joins the play for Maine. Backhands to the far side of the ice, and it's clear to center. Well, even though Cam Marks pinched way in there from his defensive slot, he did have uh, Aaron Nazarian covering out for him there, but he, Marks wasn't able to keep it in. Patrick Grasso moves in right wing side. Grasso centers it for Nazarian. Comes back to Grasso. Shot save. Rebound. Loose goes behind the net. Good combination there. You don't often hear Nazarian and Grasso together. Yeah, Nazarian skating to get off. Uh, he was uh, in the middle of a line change, but a couple of loose pucks there for the Black Bears in their own slot turned into great bids. Shea tried to come into the zone, but it was an unsteady puck that Wise took away. Wise comes in, tries a forehand shot. First one blocked. Second one he puts on net, but McGovern makes the save on the near post. And he holds on while the faceoff with 4.02 left in the first. UNH 2 and Maine 1. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
low in the first. You won 8 2, main one. Black Bears as Byron tries to come into the zone looking for Robbins, broken up by Chanter, but right back into the zone. Cam Brown, right wing side, looking to center. Bounces around. Van Riemsdyk with the intercept gives to Chanter along the far right. Chanter, diagonal feed to Blackburn at center. He'll chip it forward and try to go behind the defender, and that slips and falls. That was Hallway. He falls, but he just did enough to make sure Blackburn could not get away from the left wall. Main controls now on its own side of the ice. Surehammer's pass too far to handle. Perez will chase after it, but Boyd able to press him against the wall, take him off the play. Cedric Lacroix on the right boards takes a hit from Chanter. Comes out to the high slot. Not unable to keep it on his stick was Michael, so he has to backhand it to the far corner Boyd. Boyd can't clear out. Chanter gets in front of Taroni, so he's able to block a shot from, with his skate. Move it to center ice. Silvaggio gets to the main line. He stood up there. Comes into the zone anyway. Kelleher. Kelleher tries to weave through the slot, but there are a few too many Black Bears to break him up. Puck back at center. Marks to it. Tried to find Kelleher. Gets redirected right back to the cat zone. Cleveland. Quick lead pass Kelleher. Works it left side. Silvaggio takes a hit from Michael. Kelleher gets to it. He backhands one that gets tipped to the point. Marks. Marks gives it right side. McNicholas throws one in front, but it goes wide. And sent right back in by Cleveland. Bouncing puck in the slot. Coming away with it is Jake Papalardo for Maine. Two minutes to go in the period. Two to one Wildcats. Papalardo comes into the Wildcat zone. Maneuvers to the right wing wall. Here's a pass that comes back and a shot blocked by Cleveland as a quick rester from Keith Muehlbauer was looking for the net from the low slot. Kelleher along the far boards. Comes near side with a pass to Matthias Cleveland. Cleveland will flip it right into the glove of McGovern, and he'll hang on for a face-off. 140 left here in the first. How many of those shots do we see Matthias Cleland block? You know, he had a situation there where he could have chased the puck. Uh, as it came out, uh, there was a Black Bear player standing him about 25 feet from the net at a sharp angle. Matthias thought he was going to pass it. He looked in his eyes and saw he was going to pass it, so he stepped. He made the right step to get in the shooting lane of the guy who didn't have the puck. And then before you know it, he's blocking the shot. It's just a, an amazing wherewithal of what's going to happen with the next play. Matthias Cleland, of course, being a senior, has seen so many of those plays and reads it so well and then blocks the shot. A minute and a half to go in the first period of the Riverstone Classic 2016 edition. Wildcats have already beaten Maine twice this season, trying to sweep their rivals with a 2-1 to one lead here in the first. Puck in the neutral zone. Cephalou could not wrestle it away from Shea. And so Shea will move it to center ice. He veers left to get around Hill, now gains the line. Shea holds, fires a shot in, stick to side by Taroni. Comes to the right wing boards. In the corner, Cephalou digs it out, works it to Maller, and Maller ahead to Hill. Final minute of the period. Hill dumps to the left wing corner, off the carom. It's on the stick of Hallway. Hallway will wait behind his own net as Maine looks to break out. Puck clangs off the near boards. Racing with it, Brown. Brown into the zone with Robbins. Puck goes behind Robbins, skirts through the slot, and it's sent right around by Brown, who sent it through the crease. Comes back to Surehammer. He sends one through traffic, but Danny Taroni uses that right glove hand to make the stop. Yeah, maybe with a little extra pressure here uh, towards the end of the first period. Wildcats have closed the shot gap, but that uh, should put it at about 11 to 9 here for Maine. Probably get our last line change here for this important face-off in the Wildcat end. Cats will have their top line out here. Black Bears will have their third line, Smith, Lacroix, and Perez. That's the line that scored the goal for the Black Bears. Which also came off a face-off in the UNH zone. 35 seconds left in the first. Maine wins the draw. Smith tries to fire the quick shot from above the right circle. And Taroni makes a save. Well, that was eerily reminiscent of Smith's goal. Yes. At 116 of the first. Face off straight back to the freshman, Ryan Smith. Again out of Roanoke, Virginia. All right, off the face off, Cleland gets to it, uses the end boards to pass to Kelleher. Kelleher centers to Blackburn. Blackburn's got some room, gets double teamed just as he crossed the line. Hamilton in the far corner will chip it forward, and the Black Bears look to come out again. Pocket just outside the Wildcat line. Mark's got a piece. Kelleher can't control. Ten seconds left in the period. Silvaggio in his own zone, just skating away from Lacroix. Cleland holds at the goal line extended, and I think he'll just hold it right there and let the clock expire. So the first period is in the books here in the Riverstone Classic. And after one, 
The Wildcats with a 2-1 lead over Maine. Goals by Salvaggio and Iserman for UNH. Ryan Smith with the lone tally for Maine. Coming up, we'll have highlights, the Hockey East scoreboard, a look ahead in Wildcat country, and so much more on our first Bud Light intermission show. Bud Light, a proud partner of UNH Hockey, reminding all fans, enjoy the game and drink responsibly. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
Christian and just had a little whoops there. Uh, gave you a two to one final BC over Ferris State in overtime. And we got a little correction going here on the hockey's website. It might have been a one one final. Something might have happened there to that overtime goal. I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep a keep a heads up here on this website to see what that BC final over Ferris State really was. If I don't want to, I don't want to give you erroneous information. But anyways, the referees, linesmen are ready. Teams are ready. Mike, second period of action, take it over. Thank you, Pete. We know you'd never give us erroneous information on purpose, and that's why we have <laughs> another Bud Light intermission show coming up after the second period, plus a Bud Light postgame show after the third. So much more between now and the end. Ten seconds into the second period. Wildcats now moving left to right, send a bouncing puck in. That McGovern's able to handle, and it'll bring a face-off to the left of the main netminder. Remember, the Wildcats scored just 28 seconds into the first. We'll see if they have similar success here early in the second. Off the faceoff, Cleveland plays it up to the right wing corner. Ricochets behind the net where McNicholas digs it out, gives it to Kelleher, plays off the back wall to Savaggio. He curls back to the point marks. Left side, Cleveland plays it off the dasher, comes to the near boards. Savaggio, marks, pinching in to keep it in the zone, but able to push it just to get out is Robinson, he gets tripped up by McNicholas, so a penalty coming up against the Wildcats here. McGovern hustles to the bench, so Maine can get an extra attacker out there. Cleland finally touches up with 19-19 to go, but the Wildcats will go on the shorthand for the second time tonight. Yeah, the Wildcats, uh, you know, doing a good job of uh, controlling the puck there in the main defensive end as Maine had uh, their top line out there. Wildcats have not had that kind of uh, possession too much against that top line. Yeah, a little loose stick handle in the main start of the breakout. And McNicholas got a little overzealous there with a the stick check out at center ice. Wildcats did score in the shorthand earlier, but a shot and a score as Maine scores a power play goal from Sturhammer right off the face off above the right circle. Maine ties the score 2-2, 44 seconds in to the second period. And how about just two seconds into the power play for the Black Bears? So another one right off the face off as it was one straight back by the Black Bears. And before you know it, it's in the back of the net. Eric Scherhammer, the senior uh, from St. Paul, Minnesota, with his second goal of the year, ninth of his career. And we're all tied up 2-2. McNicholas out of the box, so we're back to five-on-five five hockey. So Red Gendron has to be a lot happier with how his team executed on the second power play than the first, which was one shorthanded goal and nearly a second. Wildcats send it in, and McGovern will... Glove it to the ice to bring the whistle and a face-off. Well, the PA announcer didn't even get a chance to announce the penalty before the goal was scored. That's how quickly that was. All right. We've hit the reset button here twice in this game. Both times early in the period, so this being the second period. Man wins the draw. Sherhammer goes right behind his own net to get away from Grasso. Pass from Muehlbauer comes to the near side. Sliding in, though, is Van Riemsdyk on the forecheck. Lifting it above Grasso's head, and the pass goes out to the far side. Now it's out at center ice. Pearson will carry across the Wildcat line. A forehand shot through Maller, and Taroni makes the save. Well, the Wildcats just got to regather themselves there and, <laughs> and talk a little bit about uh, assignments that... Uh, they have to take on the face-offs and uh, get a few more wins on those critical face-offs in your own end. Right, face-off, Lacroix and Cephalou, and Maine wins this draw. Smith, who had their first goal, plays it behind the net, looking for Perez. Trickles out to the right-wing corner. Marks gets to it and deals it to Cleland. Cleland backhand feed out to center ice. Lacroix slams it right back in. Taroni comes out of his crease, slows it down behind the net. And now Marks works it up to the right side. It's Cephalou. Cephalou racing to the main end after he dumps to the corner. He runs right into the back of the defenseman. And getting to it first is Becker. Big collision between Becker and Eiserman. Both players were up. Play continues. Puck ends up on the UNHN. Scooting around that right circle. Here's a wrist shot. That goes wide. That was sent in by Perez off the near post. Puck goes bouncing off behind the Wildcat cage and is controlled by the Cats. Marks moves out the hill. He'll get a piece, but he was on the wrong end of the red line, so as it goes down, it's an icing call with 17.48 to go in the second, all tied 2-2. Two -two. 
Yeah, Shane Eisman with a big hit, just stood up the main player in his own end. Then coming back the other way, Shane was in good position as the puck came squirting out to him, hopped right over his stick. And a big blast by that main player that he had just taken out. Face off to Taroni's right. Bouncing around the circle, Maine wins the draw. Comes back to Hamilton, but broken up. And then Hamilton knocks down Jamie Hill after Hill sent it down the ice. Yeah, Wildcat fans are wondering why that's not an interference call. There were a couple of strides before Hill was taken down. Papalardo comes into the zone. First shot goes off the back wall. Comes back to Papalardo. Now to the right side. Shot by Hayes. Save made by Taroni. Malcolm Hayes took the carom around the right circle. Had a clear view of the net, but Dandy Taroni had slid over to make the stop. And all the bounces are going the Black Bears' way in the Wildcat defensive end. Oh, that puck just in a deflection just slides right out. Face off to Taroni's left this time. And McNicholas wins the draw to Boyd. Chanter gives to Kelleher. Keller, who assisted on the first goal, goes across the way looking for Salvaggio, who had that first Wildcat tally. Salvaggio loses an edge and skates, slams right into the boards behind the main net, and the Black Bears come out the other way. Michael can't handle it center, so it's on the stick of McNicholas. Looks in for Salvaggio into the main zone. Salvaggio, right wing boards, takes a hit from Hamilton. He goes down in a heap. Byron gets to it along the boards, though. Kelleher battling. Salvaggio gets back into the mix, returns the favor with a... Bit of a hip check on Byron. McNicholas along the right wall. Plays it back to the point, Chanter. Chanter goes across the way, Boyd. Boyd centering feed, tipped and redirected by Salvaggio on net, but easily covered up by McGovern. Yeah, there was McNicholas getting his uh, stick stuck under the arm of McGovern. Now the Wildcats trying a little uh, D to D passing. They haven't done it that much here in the game, just once or twice in each period so far. That's just a credit to uh, how Maine is covering up in their own end. Maine has the layers going. One, two, three players backing up where the puck is. And off the faceoff, shot gets tipped up into the netting, so we'll have another faceoff. 16.40 left in the second period. UNH2, Maine 2. The Black Bears scored their tying goal 44 seconds into the second. Eric Scherhammer on the power play. The assist went to Patrick Shea the seventh of the year for Shea. Face off to the right of McGovern. Miller will take the draw against Pearson. Goes into the corner, but Maine gets there first. Surehammer goes behind his own net, wraps around to the near boards. VC. VC will do enough to bring it to center ice. Skates around his own blue line. Gets to the center circle and chips it into the Wildcat zone. Fragona slows it down and works it at the far end. Nazarian does enough to bring it to center ice, and now Miller on it. Miller accelerates into the main zone, left wing side. Backhand pass behind Fragona as he tried to go across the way. VC the other way in transition, one on two. Forehand shot and a snapper. Save made Taroni, and a quick whistle will lead to a faceoff. Yeah, a little stick clap in there with, uh, looks like uh, Cameron Marks down there, and sometimes that puck just comes a little bit faster when your sticks slap each other. And it was a short side shot, tough save by Taroni. Made the stop on Nolan Vesey. Skating with Pearson and Shea on the second line. That's two freshmen and a junior. All right, face off to Taroni's right. It's loose in the slot, and the Wildcats get to it with Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk centering feed Blackburn. Blackburn comes across, but too soon was Grasso. He attempted to toe drag, but just was in a tad too early. Uh, you mentioned some of those names of the Black Bears. There's a lot of uh, optimism around the Black Bears camp. And a couple of years down the road, these young players like Pearson and Shea who are drafted, and Patrick Holloway drafted by the Red Wings, that they're, they're really going to you know, lead the uh, main Black Bears to something really positive and try to creep up the standings. Perez comes in the zone, and his slap shot goes wide. Hit Karam's off the glass. Maine in the standings this season. Off to a slow start in Hockey East. Just 1-6-1. One, one. Quite the antithesis to what the Wildcats are doing. 5-1-1 one, one in league play. Although tonight, the Riverstone Classic, a non-conference game. Nice holiday season treat for the fans here at the SNHU Arena in Manchester. Grasso has it left side. Works to the circle. Still battles for it. Backhand shot off the side of the net. Blackburn, goal line extended right controls for the Cats. Now he's pressed against the boards. Grasso comes to assist along the left half wall. Back to Chanter. Tried to throw one in. Perez blocked it. Works to Grasso. Left wing side. Now puck along the end wall. It's 
get it high off the glass on the far side. Boyd chips, tries to keep it in, but Maine's got some numbers the other way. Potential odd man rush on the right side. Smith the shot, save Taroni as he denies him from the middle of the right circle. And it's out to center. We stay 2-2, 14-51 left. And there's a timeout on the ice. We'll take it as well. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. Cephalou stick now and it clears the glass to the fans right down in front of us in the main zone so face off upcoming with 14.30 remaining in the middle period it's UNH2 and Main 2. Well as a good journalist would do is uh, you know get double confirmation on some information so I have double confirmation that that BC Ferris State game ended in a 1-1 tie confirmed by two different websites so a late goal in the third period Six on five situation. Tied that game up. No overtime goal there for Boston College. All right. The sleuth, Pete Webster, coming down with the information. And he'll have all kinds of scores coming up on the Bud Light intermission show after the second period. It's chipped in the Wildcat zone on the backhand feed. And it goes behind Taroni, his left shoulder. Wildcats will break it out from the far side. Savaggio no, couldn't clear from Byron. Second attempt does find its way to Kelleher. Kelleher comes into the zone. He veers to the right circle. Shot, star! Tyler Kelleher, the sniper, gives the Wildcats a 3-2 lead at 5.58 of the second period. Well, Tyler Kelleher just showed what a sniper he is. Rob McGovern. I just didn't look like he uh, he took he took Kelleher too seriously there and uh, left the near post open as Tyler made his little move to get a, get around two sticks to Black Bears that were right there. We're gonna have a goalie change right now. Matt Morris is going to come in for McGovern. Well, uh, Coach Red Jenner may have saw something that I saw up here. It's like uh, McGovern was quite slow to react in that play as far as just positioning. And Tyler Callagher picks it clean. All right, so Matt Morris, the senior from Ridgewood, New Jersey, in net now. As Red Gendron, arms folded, not showing much emotion over there, but you can tell what's going through his mind as the Black Bears trail for the third time in this game. They have yet to lead, but they've come back from two previous one-goal deficits. 13-35 left. Wildcats skate on the cycle along the right wing boards. Wise keeps it into Miller. Miller forehand shot, save made as Morris gets right into the mix. And Maine comes out the other way with an odd man rush. Three on two, but they slow it down as they cross the line. Hallway tries a wrister. That's blocked by Wise, and Wise will play it off the near wall into the center zone. Thought Maine had a chance there, Pete, but they slowed down. Yeah, it looked like a promising three on two as the Wildcats scurried back to get the forwards back on the back check. Pass comes to Fergona just across the main line, but he could not break free from Surehammer and Lacroix. Wise, though, gets in front of the red line, and he'll dump it back in, forcing Maine back at its heels. Blackburn on the four-check, can't keep in as Perez plays it to center. Chanter goes across to the far side, and it's swatted in by Grasso. Wraps around left to right. Van Riemsdyk gets to it along the right half wall. Over to Blackburn, centering feed behind Grasso. And Karam's off the far side of the ice and lifted in the air by Smith. Perez tries to settle the puck down on the Wildcat end along the right wing side, looking for Smith in front, broken up. Smith goes down, the puck ends up with Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk, diagonal feed. Grasso can't handle it, hits off the boards, goes behind the main net inside the trapezoid. Van Riemsdyk taken off the play by Perez, and this allows Muehlbauer to come out with it. Muehlbauer using the near boards to look for Hayes at center. Poke checked away by Chanter, and this... Leads to Perez and Hamilton retreating to the main zone. Hayes comes back as well in the back check. Lacroix gathers it at the red line. Comes into the zone left wing side. Tries to drag around. Chanter was all the way behind the net. He slipped and fell to the ice. Lost the puck. Taroni had come out to challenge. Muehlbauer unable to keep in the zone along the right point. Van Riemsdyk goes after it. 
and settles it down for the Wildcats, who lead 3-2, 11.45 to go in the second. Kelleher into the main zone left side. He's one on three. Backhands one along the far side. Save made by Morris. Kelleher went hard into the boards, and he's slow getting up. He's trying to skate towards the bench. Byron, meanwhile, comes the other way for the Black Bears. I just hope uh, that's the wind knocked out of him, but uh, he hit the boards awkwardly, Kelleher did. Shot from the high slot sent in. Save is made. Rob Michael put it in, and a kick save on the right pad of Danny Taroni. Yeah, Kelleher sat down for a moment. Athletic trainer Glenn Riefenstahl glances over at him. They have a quick conversation, and Kelleher appears to be okay as the icing is called on Maine with 11.07 to go. On, on, yeah, on Maine. 11.07 to go here in the second. It's Wildcats 3, Black Bears 2. You're listening, you're listening to UNH Hockey from Learfield. Arena in Manchester, Aaron Boss producing at our flagship just down the road, WGIR. Wherever you're listening along the network, we're glad you're with us. Happy early New Year's. Wildcats with his 3-2 lead. They've already chased a goaltender, I guess, in a way. As Rob McGovern's out and Matt Morris is in. Black Bears control the puck along the right wing boards in the Wildcat zone. Checked by Wise, takes Brown off the play, but it's kept in on the right point by Becker. Becker moves it to the mid-slot and trying to clear the zone. Cephalou inadvertently lifts it over the glass. Hey, great news for all you pizza lovers. Papa John's would like to offer all fans listening to today's game 50% off all online orders at participating Papa John's locations in New Hampshire. For the next week, just use your online promo code WILDCATS50. That's WILDCATS50 when ordering pizza at papajohns.com. Enjoy, and thanks to Papa John's. All right, off the faceoff. Maine has it in the left wing corner. VC works it behind the net with Shea. On the far side, VC moves it back to the point. VC gets it back along the right half wards. Comes across on a pass on the near side. Hits off the wall. No one there for Maine, so Wise looks to clear. Can't get it beyond VC though, who's battling along the left wing boards. VC back ends it to the right wing side. Goes behind the Wildcat net. Taroni looking to see where it goes. It's in the left wing corner. Mallers there. Unable to clear initially, so the Black Bears continue the attack. Trying to turn it around and get a shot off, but in, in, unable to do so is Patrick Shea. Shea moves it to Vesey in the slot. Turn, shot, save. Taroni rebound behind the net with it. Vesey looking to backhand in the center. Wise with the intercept before it could get in front of uh, Taroni. But a lot of time, Maine possessing the puck in the Wildcat end. Muehlbauer works it into the right wing corner with Pearson. Pearson gets tripped up. He's sitting down in his keister in the right wing corner. Comes out, a quick shot fired in from the right circle by Smith. And that was denied by Taroni. 3-2 Wildcats, but Maine on the attack with 8.50 left in the second period. Way too much time in the UNH end. Smith chips at it behind the Cats net. It's out near Taroni on the near post. All kinds of pushing and shoving, but no shot. And finally, Jamie Hill will lift it high in the air and send it down the length of the ice. Ah, and he couldn't get a good bounce of the puck either, so it slides for an icing call. So that group is going to have to come right back out here on the ice. Now the Wildcats just getting all kinds of twisted and turned in their own end, pinned back in. Just couldn't figure things out. Now Maine doing a good job of layering things along the boards, and now once they gain possession, protecting the puck. And Wildcats having to do... A lot of extra work to even just try to get a stick in there as Maine protecting the puck very, very well. A couple of times Danny Taroni holding the short side pretty good there and tight pucks that come sliding in on him. At least with this break, those tired legs had a few minutes to catch their breath before we drop the puck off this icing to the right of Taroni. That was a long break. But the Cats desperately need a clear. 
Face off one by Main, backhanded by Michael. Off the end boards, Maller works it to Wise, and it finally comes to center ice. Wildcats see if they can get those skaters to the bench as Main looking to get it back to the cat zone. Wise over to Maller, near side of the D. Diagonal feed disrupted by Hayes, and Miller just onto the ice, gets to it. Back to Maller. Long head man pass. Able to find Nazari, and he dumps it to the right wing corner. Miller came racing, and he ran into Michael. They both go down to the ice. Puck on the stick of Cleland, who throws it in from the red line, and it was on net. Morris forced to make the stop. Papalardo can't control a pass to the near side, and this will be an icing call against Maine. 7.51 remaining in the middle period. UNH 3, Maine 2. Tyler Kelleher with his 13th goal of the year at 5.58, assisted by Cleland. And Matias Cleland having himself a year of assists. Yeah, you know, in that play, too, the Wildcats tried that diagonal pass. One of the forwards uh, over there tried to make the pass, and it didn't get to Kelleher, deflected back to Cleland. He then made the same diagonal pass, and it got through, and Kelleher made the, made the play happen. Kelleher had two goals and assists in each of the two games against Maine earlier, and he's gotten a goal and assist here today. He centers to Cleland. Cleland moves in, but the Cats are offside with 7.40 left in the second. Wildcats three, Black Bears two. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. at unh.edu slash analytics. 3-2 Wildcats, 7.40 left second period. Face off just outside the main line. Cats win the draw. Cleland pass to Salvaggio. Stood up by a couple of Black Bears and main controls. It's Michael. Michael working along the boards in front of his own bench. will flip it into the Wildcat zone. Cats on the back check. Kelleher gets to it. Kelleher skates by Byron. Good to see... Tyler Kelleher back after skating hard into the boards earlier in this period. Marks tries to lift one for McNicholas who can't get beyond Hamilton. And, and now we have a call. What's this going to be? It's got to be McNicholas going to get a tripping call. Uh, I think he stuck his leg out on the Black Bear player as he was uh, trying to get the puck in the zone. But yeah, that's going to be McNicholas heading to the penalty box. Oh, Wildcat just couldn't, couldn't get the... The break and uh, the, the play operating there with Kelleher picking up the puck in his own end. He kind of skated towards his defenseman. And that makes it easier to defend with one four checker playing two guys. There really wasn't anything open and it just got squirted up the wing where McNicholas completed the infraction. 12.51 the time of the penalty. Wildcats able to win the face off in the main zone or in their own zone rather and bring it down to the main end where Wise wrapped it around for Grasso. Each of the first two main power plays have resulted in goals. The first one, it was a shorthanded goal by Shane Eiserman, and the other one, a Surehammer power play goal, just two seconds into a power play. So 6.45 and counting left, second period, a minute and a half, and counting on the McNicholas penalty. And Maine can't set up as they get the puck to the Wildcats zone, only to see Maller swipe it all the way down the ice. Yeah, it's going to be a critical kill here for the Wildcats. Uh, they don't want to have the reset button here for the third time here today. Surehammer deals it off right side hallway into the Wildcat zone. Pearson moves to the right circle, moves to the slot, shot. Great save by Taroni to deny Nolan Vesey from the low slot. And we'll get a face off with 6.18 to play in the second. Wow, what a save by Danny Taroni keeping the Wildcats in this. 
with another great save. At that time, the main player freed up all alone about 30 feet out. Tried to go to uh, Taroni's right. That quick pad, though, made the save. Off the faceoff, Grasso lifts high in the air, and this bouncing puck will go down to the near side right corner, forcing Michael to go back and retrieve midway through this main power play. Blaine Byron skates up ice. Pass for Brown, too far for him to handle, so Kelleher will work it to Salvaggio. He'll pass back to Kelleher in his own zone. Cats playing some nice keep away in their own end. Cleland, near side Marks, and then Marks will just fire it to the opposite corner, left side. And Maine will reset. Here's Byron again charging up ice. Works it to Michael. Michael gains the zone. Michael moves to the high slot. Pass left side. Here's a centering feed from Brown intended for Robbins. Broken up by the Cats before a shot could go on net. 20 seconds left on the main power play. Byron tries a wrist shot from the right circle, but that's blocked nicely by Shane Eiserman. And Michael comes all the way back behind the zone net. Under 10 seconds remaining on the man advantage for the Black Bears before McNicholas can get out of the box. Brown comes into the zone, right wing boards. Leaves it back for Byron at the point. Byron veers towards the net. His shot goes wide. He was looking for the near post. Byron has it back as we're back to five on five hockey. And five minutes left in the second period. There have been five goals scored. Three for UNH, two for Maine. Cats send it down the ice. And Morris looking to get it to the far boards. Boyd comes up with it for the Wildcats in the neutral zone and waits for his mates to come on side, then flips it in. Now, Wildcats need to get a four check established here, create some turnovers by the main defense. That led to a lot of success in the first win by the Cats. Fregona a steal, Fregona shoots, and he scores! Justin Fregona took it away at the right point, angled towards the net, and fired to the top left hand corner to give the Wildcats a 4 2 lead with 4.30 left in the second period. Justin, don't you know you have to let me say my piece about four checking and creating turnovers before you create a turnover and walk in and score? What a great goal there for the fresh freshman out of Mississauga, Ontario. His first career point is a big one here, giving the Wildcats a 4-2 lead. His 13th game, he couldn't wait anymore, Pete. He had to score that <laughs> yeah. first goal. What a beauty it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that was a, a water bottle lifter there, top shelf. So for going to skating with Chris Miller and Aaron Azarian today in that third line, and for the first time tonight, the Wildcats lead by two goals. It's four to two. All right, Lacroix centering feed Perez. Perez plays it to the right wing corner of the Wildcat zone. Perez chases after it in the wall, moves it back to Hallway. Hallway looks to throw one in, but it's blocked off the body of Nazarian over to Fergona. The latest hero, he'll backhand to the main end, but you said it earlier, Pete, a big penalty kill for the Wildcats, and shortly thereafter, they're able to strike and build this lead to two as Maine's call for icing. Yeah, you just you felt a lot of wind on that main bench just get sucked out uh, after uh, they had a chance on the power play and Cats have very effectively killed it off. They got some great goaltending on that. At the other end of the ice, you, you, you create the turnover on the four check. And now you got a freshman scoring his first career point, first goal. Wow, that might be uh, something in the confidence department for Justin Fragona. And next man in mentality, the Wildcats playing without Marcus Vela, who's been sick, just a little bit of an illness since the holidays, but Fregona skating on that third line, steps up, and it's 4-2 Cats. Perez for Maine gets to the Wildcat line, then plays it off the end boards. Marks gets there for the Wildcats along the near side, right Grasso looking for the diagonal pass of Van Riemsdyk, too hot for him to handle, and this will be an icing against the Cats with 3.20 left in the second period. Yeah, the diagonal passes have not really worked against Maine in this narrow rink, this NHL-style rink. I don't know if that's uh, just because uh, it's narrower or Maine is defending it, uh, defending that passing lane a little bit better. Face off to the right of Taroni. In the Wildcat zone, but the Cats come out with it. And they'll have our first power play coming up. Grasso had the puck. He got to the blue line and was tripped up by Cam Brown. So after Maine's three power plays, the Wildcats will get their first unitil power play 
here with 3-12 remaining in the second period. Yeah, a little mock cheer here from uh, the Wildcat faithful. Here in the SNHU arena as uh, the Wildcats will see that first man advantage. So with 3-12 left to play in the middle period here, a great opportunity for the Wildcats to uh, really make a statement in this game. They have the two-goal lead. Never a safe lead against the main Black Bears. So it's a Unitil power play, Unitil energy for life. Maine able to win the opening faceoff of the power play, and Michael sent it down the ice, forcing Toronto to come out. So it's Kelleher in his own zone. Giving to McNicholas. McNicholas across the main line. Takes a check from Michaels along the half boards. Kelleher and Salvaggio there trying to dig it off the wall. It's in the left circle. Salvaggio has it, and we get a whistle. And another penalty coming up. Is this going to be on Maine, or is it going to be on Grasso? Referee's pointing at uh, Patrick Grasso. So the Wildcats' first power play goes by the wayside. They get 26 seconds on the man advantage. And a little overzealous with a stick. Patrick Grasso trying to somehow squirt that puck out of a scrum over there with McNicholas down on the ice. So Grasso was the beneficiary just 26 seconds earlier after being tripped up by Brown. Now we're back to four on four as a shot rocketed from the top of the right circle by Michael gets deflected wide. Four on four hockey. Michael has it over to Hamilton near point left. Kelleher denies him. Marks plays it farther along the wall. It's in the right faceoff circle of the main attack zone. Black Bear is trailing it 4 to 2, 222 left in the middle period. Cleland over to Kelleher. Kelleher crossed the main line. He has a goal and an assist already. Trying to break free of the big defenseman, Mark Hamilton. Behind the net, McNicholas gives to Kelleher. Backhand shot saved by Morris. His initial save tipped it in the air, and then he snared it out of midair to bring a faceoff. Yeah, Matt Morris has to go all first baseman on Tyler Kelleher. Found himself with a puck on the backhand side all alone out in front in tight quarters. It's a great setup by McNicholas. Byron against Blackburn, face off. Left circle in the New Hampshire attack zone. And the Black Bears win this draw. Backing things up a bit is Becker. Becker with Byron. On the four check, Blackburn near corner tries to get to it. Instead, it's Byron inside the trapezoid. Goes out of the far side of the net and begins the march up ice. It's over to Becker, intercepted by Wise, and he'll use the end boards to work it D to D to Maller near side. Maller's diagonal feed does find Ram Van Riemsdyk. We're four on four for another 30 seconds, and then Maine will have an abbreviated power play. Pass comes to Wise in the main zone, left wing board. Looking to center for Van Riemsdyk, he chopped at it, couldn't get it on the stick. Comes out to Blackburn along the near boards. He battles with Becker. And it's peeled off and given to Hallway. Hallway moves it to center ice for Maine. Byron skates in front of the Wildcat bench and passes to the near side of the rink. It's Hallway converging with Marks. Marks gets there first for the Wildcats, and he'll work it to Wise. Wise plays to Kelleher. Maine has their fifth skater out there, so it's a power play. But here comes Kelleher, one on four. And he finally gets broken up by Lacroix. So only 15 seconds on this Maine power play. Let's see what they can do with it. Brown comes into the zone. Takes a check from Savaggio with a minute left in the second period. Another big hit takes down the Wildcats. Marks comes to Scherhammer in the slot. He shoots and he scores. A one-timer from Eric Scherhammer. He scores his second power play goal of the game. And with only 52 seconds left in the second, Maine is back within one. It's now 4-3 to three, UNH. As you said, Mike, there was only 15 seconds on that Maine power play. They only took nine to score. So in two power play situations, Maine takes 11 seconds to score two goals. Sherhammer set up right in the mid-slot area with a big blast. Up over the, uh, the blocker stick side of Danny Taroni. Now it looked promising for the Cats to really put a statement on this game. Maine has fought and gotten back into this. It may not be done here in the second period as they get the puck to the Wildcat zone. It's Smith from the right boards. Tried a shot, but Cleveland got in the way. Smith scored from the boards early in this game as we get a whistle with 34.1 seconds remaining. What's the call here? I think it might have uh, hit the netting up behind uh, the Wildcats uh, net. And so the faceoff, yeah, that's probably what it is. The uh, faceoff's going to come out to center ice. Matthias Cleland there with a good hard hit uh, of his own along the boards. Cam Marks just took one. And Wildcats need to dish out a little bit of physicality here. 
Off the face off, it's a neutral ice before Maine tries to carry in, but they're offside. Sneaking across the line was Patrick Shea. Coming up in about 28.3 seconds, we'll have our second Bud Light intermission show. Highlights, plenty of scores to pass along. A look ahead in Wildcat country. 4-3 UNH here in the Riverstone Classic 2016 edition. 14th year Wildcats playing here in Manchester, our 16th year in Manchester. Including some NCAA regionals, and the regionals are back here at the SNHU Arena this March. Ticket information, find out more at unhwildcats.com. Six seconds left as the Wildcats were offside, so one more face-off and maybe a quick trigger shot. Otherwise, we'll go to the locker room and look forward to a pretty exciting final 20 minutes of regulation. Yeah, both teams uh, making a line change here with six seconds left. We want to get the uh, right face-off guy out there. It's going to be right at center ice. And it comes in the main zone. Black Bears hang on, and that will do it. Two periods in the books. Here in the second, the Wildcats. Goals by Kelleher is 13th. Fragona is first. But then Eric Scherhammer is second power play goal of the night. Gets Maine back within one after two. UNH four, Maine three. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
SNH U Arena in Manchester, four to three, Cats after two. Aaron Boss producing at our flagship WGIR in Manchester. For period three, Wildcats moving from right to left, but it's Maine with the initial flurry as they come in on Taroni. Don't get a shot off, but it comes back to Michael at the right point. Michael leaves to Byron. Byron turns, fires a wrist shot, blocked down by Cleland. Over to McNicholas. Uses the back wall to move it to Marks, who returns the feed to McNicholas. Cats unable to clear it, however, as Byron once again steps in. Byron, right circle, backhands one. That's under the pads of Taroni. He didn't look too confident there, but he gains the whistle. And a face-off, 32 seconds into the third, upcoming. Now well, Wildcats with a couple of passes on the breakout, but they just couldn't get it out over the line, out to center ice. Maine sees it, and they know what passing lanes they have to get into. And looking for that loose puck out or around their center blue line area. All right, face off, won by Maine, but they turn it over to Van Riemsdyk, and Brendan Van Riemsdyk gets to the red line and sends it on net. And Matt Morris, who came on in relief of Rob McGovern, who played the first 25 minutes and 58 seconds, makes the stop, and some extracurricular talking after the fact, but the face off will be in the main zone. Don't forget, fans, we're back at the Whittemore Center Friday night for the return of Hockey East play, a 6 o'clock start on youth night as 7th ranked UMass Lowell comes to town. Tickets available at unhwildcats.com or call 603-862-4000. Face off puck goes behind the net. Surehammer has two goals for Maine. Carries it up and works it to Nolan Vesey. Vesey across the Wildcat line. Maller slows him down a bit but Vesey still controls behind the Cats net. Out to the point and Muehlbauer set one in that got deflected and ends up in the netting bringing the stoppage at 19.02 of the third. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be high anyways, and I think it hit somebody up around the shoulder area. It's going to stay uh, stay in the zone. It's a tale, tale of two teams right now. The Wildcats struggling on the breakout, and uh, Maine uh, very effective getting their breakout going. It looked like they had four guys all astride of each other. Off the faceoff, Perez tries the sneaky backhand from the inner circle on the right wing, but it goes above the crossbar. Puck still in the Wildcat zone, though. Lacroix from the boards tries a tester on the sharp angle, goes wide of Taroni on the near side. Miller goes after it. Cleland gets there for the Cats. Now it's ahead to Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk from the left side dumps to the right corner. Over skating the puck was Becker, so it's loose along the right boards. Becker now controls, and from behind his own end line gives the hallway. Cleland chips to keep it in the zone. Becker stands between the puck and Blackburn, but Van Riemsdyk on the four check gets to it. He looks to backhand front. Blackburn, right circle shot. That goes wide. Now Cleland a shot and a save made. Cleland was in the left boards and the pad save for Morris. Matthias Cleland back at center ice. Wildcats four, Black Bears three. We're two minutes into the third. Dylan Chanter comes into the zone. Iserman, who scored earlier, throws one in. That was offline, but Morris still makes the stop. Iserman's goal was a shorthanded tally at 9.02 of the first. We've had Savaggio, Iserman, Kelleher, and Justin Fragona score. Fragona, the freshman, his first career tally, the most recent goal at 15.30 of the second period. Yeah, the Cats would suit themselves well if they can pick up another one here and reestablish a two-goal lead. Well, they get the puck down to the left corner off the faceoff. Hill, though, can't dig it out as Maine takes him off the play. And the Black Bears in transition. Sent down the far side by Papalardo. Goes behind the Wildcat net. Cephalou can't handle initially, but still works for it to the far boards and clears it to center. And now it bounces all the way to the main end. And this will be an icing against your Wildcats at 224 of the third. Well, again, two different scenarios. Main fires it down. They win the battle to the dot. They avoid the icing. Wildcats clear it out. They get called for the icing. Wildcats have to turn around that karma they have right now. They saw from the left circle for Maine in the offensive zone. A shot save made to Roney as the shot came from Cam Brown. Chanter then seals him off so there would be no rebound. And another face off coming up. Went with Douglas Hospital in Dover, New Hampshire is the Seacoast leading medical center. The official hospital of UNH Athletics. Learn more about their location, services, and health centers by visiting www.wdhospital.com. Face-off supposed to be McNicholas and Byron, but McNicholas has been told to step aside, so Keller takes the draw, and he wins it. 
but then it's lost in that left circle. Here comes Brown, a quick wrist shot save on the left shoulder of Danny Taroni as Brown was going stick side. Brown again on a redirect to the near post. Can't get this one on net. Maller plays it to the back wall, but Maine is quick. Byron plays it in front, point blank shot, save Taroni as he's able to deny Brendan Robbins. My oh my, Danny Taroni. Stepping on his head for a moment there. Here comes Kelleher the other way. Kelleher getting wrapped up by Byron, and this will lead to a call. Byron's going to the penalty box here as Tyler Kelleher will set up a power play with 16.58 left in the third. UNH four, main three. Well, all the, uh, all the print writers down in front of us are making their leads now, and it's going to include Danny Taroni. As Danny Taroni is standing on his head right now, keeping the Wildcats in this game. Defensively, Wildcats look all in disarray, but they have a situation here with a power play. Blaine Bryan gets a little indiscipline and holds Tyler Kelleher, and he's going to sit down for a couple of minutes. It's a Unitil power play, Unitil energy for life. Wildcats 0 for 1 in the power play, but their initial one was harshly negated by a Grasso penalty just 24 seconds into it. So let's see if they can have a full two minutes to work with. Cleland on the ice with McNicholas, Kelleher, Grasso, and Salvaggio. McNicholas comes into the main zone, left wing corner. Main player lost his stick, but he's kicking out the puck in the corner. Wildcats trying to get to it as well. Peeled off the wall by Kelleher. Curls it back to the middle, Cleland. Touch pass, Salvaggio. Back to the high slot, Kelleher. At the point, Cleland, one-timer. That's blocked into the right circle. Pass comes back to Salvaggio. Cleland tic-tacks it over to Kelleher. He spins away from the check, plays it in front, shot, save made as Grasso was right on the doorstep, but Morris makes a terrific stop, and a face-off is coming up. Oh, the Cats thought they had it in the back of the net. Grasso down on one knee, probably thinking, oh, how come uh, that didn't go in? And this young man had a, such a terrific first half, needs to, needs to get off the schneid here and get it going here in the second half to continue a great freshman season. But he was denied by Matt Morris. 20 points for the first year player from Ankeny, Iowa. 11 goals, nine assists, but stopped in this case by Morris, who will look at the face off to his left. McNicholas on the draw for the Cats. On the right side, McNicholas back to Cleland. McNicholas trying to get it off the boards against Michael. Cleland plays it down low. Kelleher back to McNicholas in the circle. He has Salvaggio in the slot. It's Grasso behind the net, battling for it against Michael. Kelleher along the left wing boards. Works it back to Cleveland at the point. Goes diagonal to McNicholas, right circle. A cross ice pass. Can't be handled cleanly by Kelleher. Has it back in the circle. Kelleher moves to the high slot. Cleveland at left point. Cleveland walks in, into the circle, still holds. Plays it in front, tipped by Grasso. Comes back to the right side. Kelleher looking to play in front. Delay call coming up. Puck is in the crease. All kinds of bodies spill. And I'm not sure what the call is, Pete, but something was whistled from behind the play. Yeah, way out at uh, the blue line, the referee had his arm up in the air for a penalty, a cross-checking on the main Black Bears. Grasso ended up down on the ice, and uh, and he was uh, dumped on and had his helmet removed. So this is going to be huge, 28 seconds of a five-on-three. As uh, Lacroix is going to sit down here for the cross-checking call. With Blaine Byron already in the box for a holding penalty at 3.02. The time of this penalty is 4.34. And Lacroix down. Well, what a golden opportunity here for the Wildcats who already have put together a nice flurry of activity around Morris during their Unitil power play. 4-3 Cats lead, 15.26 left, and there's a discussion in front of the official scorers now with both referees, Chris Moulet and Michael Baker. Plus, Jeremy Lovett, a linesman, was there. And the main captain, Cam Brown, uh, trying to figure out what's going on here. So, Yeah, a little bit different than playing at the Whittemore Center where the benches are right near the scorers in the penalty box. Here it's the opposite. The benches are side by side on the far side of the rink, but your penalty box and official scorers are right here on the near side. Now, this should give the Wildcats a five on three situation for 28 seconds. I'm not sure what all the discussion is. It's like, make the call referee, get him in the box, let's go. Let's play this thing out. And uh, somebody's gonna call a timeout here. I, I would think it's probably gonna be, well, it's uh, UNH calling, calling a timeout. And I thought Maine would probably wanna call their timeout uh, being a critical defensive situation, but 
Yeah, it's head coach Dickie Milley wants to get things right here in this five on three. So we'll take a timeout as well. 14.32 to go in the third. UNH4, main three. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. Manchester, site of the 2016 Riverstone Classic, UNH4, Main 3, and a pretty pivotal moment of this game, Pete, with the Wildcats going in a two-minute advantage. Yeah, that's, uh, I think it's really critical. Uh, it's, uh, actually, thinking about it, it doesn't surprise me that head coach Dick Amelie takes his time out here because you can uh, pick off another goal in this five-on-three situation and remind your guys that Maine is going to look to try to get any opportunity they can, especially when they get a man out. And, and also, just to remind the guys, don't breathe on a main Black Bear player. All right, Kelleher comes into the zone after the faceoff, carried it to the neutral zone. It's Grasso on the right side. Grasso behind the net with the pass to Wise. Now a shot from Kelleher that goes wide. Kelleher already a goal and an assist in this one. Grasso along the left half wall to Cleland. Down the mid slot, Kelleher holds in the forehand. His shot sails high over the crossbar. The Karam brings it out to the left wing boards. First penalty is over on Byron, so now it's a one-man penalty, but an odd man rush the other way. Lead pass comes to Byron. He comes in. His shot goes to the side of the net. He held on too long, trying to get Taroni to deke one way or the other. And even though Brown set up Byron nicely for the shorthand bid, Maine comes up empty. The other way, Kelleher into the zone. He veers to the right, spins away from the defender, now lost the puck at center, and has to go back to retrieve. Gives to Blackburn. Blackburn. Over to McNicholas, onside pass, just across the main line, but the Black Bear is able to clear it to center. And a chance to rush into the Wildcat zone for Robbins. His shot from the right side, stopped by Taroni. Robbins the rebound, but he was behind the net as he had Taroni far out of the cage. Marks to Cleveland behind the net, so twice Maine with opportunities on the shorthand. Still 40 seconds remaining on the penalty against Lacroix. Blackburn into the main zone, left wing. He's joined by Nazarian. Goal line extended Blackburn in the corner. He blows a tire, loses the puck, and Maine capitalizes as it's sent down the ice by Pearson. 13.45 left in regulation, 4-3 Wildcats, trying to capitalize on what was briefly a five-on-three power play. Nazarian comes in, Nazarian right in front, and the net comes off its moorings. He came in from the left side, went right on to Morris and couldn't trigger a shot. Allen. Nazarian's going to get called for uh, dislodging the net. No penalty, uh, but it's going to come out to center ice. Just 11 seconds left on the Wildcat power play. Not exactly the power play situation the Cats really had hoped would, as it has panned out. You know, right when the uh, first penalty expired, that's, uh, you know, I'm sure the coaching staff reminded them, uh, the guy's coming out of the box. Don't get an odd man rush going that way. And, boy, it turned out to be a breakaway. Heiserman into the main zone. Shane from the left wing side. Tried a wrist shot. Blocked down by Hallway. Penalty's over, so Maine is back to even strength here. And the Black Bears look to get the equalizer coming across the way and trying to fire a shot. Lacroix. It was tipped by Heiserman, so it doesn't get on net. Ends up in the left wing corner. Chanter slips down to two knees. Lacroix has it along the left half boards. Works it down low. Coming behind the cage with it. Are the Black Bears out to the point. Hallway throws one in. That's blocked before it could reach Taroni. Now Smith whirls and fires. Cephalou got a stick on it. Out to the far side. Chanter. Nice lead pass to Jamie Hill out of the zone. His feed for Eisman couldn't be handled. It's a bouncing puck. Cephalou chips it forward. Ends up in the main zone. Black Bears regroup and work up ice. Hallway. Right side Papalardo. The Granite State native tries to center for Hosakis. Broken up by the Wildcats. Miller gets just outside the main line and then dumps in. Behind his own net and carrying out from right to left is Becker. He's forced to backpedal. And it's sent off the far boards and this will be an icing call against Maine with 12-13 to go in the third. UNH4 Maine 3. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
from Dunkin' Donuts. Text UNH to 74121. Text that now to get entered, and don't forget to download the Dunkin' Donuts app and enroll in the DD Perks Rewards Program to take advantage of exclusive offers every month. Again, text UNH to 74121 now for a chance to win a $20 mobile gift card. America runs on Dunkin'. Now we're down to the final 11.45 of regulation as Maine ices the puck. 4-3 UNH leads. That was the final score when UNH defeated Maine at Alphond Arena December 3rd. The previous night, the Wildcats... I don't want to say eased to a win, but certainly a more comfortable final margin. A 5-1 victory at the Whittemore Center trying to sweep. And they are rivals. No hockey East points at stake here today. Non-conference game for the Riverstone Classic. Off the faceoff, Kelleher tried a wrist shot from the top of the left circle. That was blocked down. Bouncing puck along the left boards. Brown able to get it off the boards and work it to Byron. And here come the Black Bears. It's Hamilton. Shot deflected by Marks. Goes behind the net into the near corner. Kelleher there for the Wildcats. Takes a hit from Becker. And the Wildcats come out. Cleveland to McNicholas. He's at the end of his shift, though, so he'll gently play it to the main zone and head to the bench. Byron can't control outside his own line, so it's taken away by Blackburn. Comes in left side. His shot sailed high. Glances off the glass. And the Black Bears in transition again with Hamilton. Works in the near boards before Van Reems like checks him into the glass. Taroni gets to it behind his own net. Blackburn touch pass to Grasso. Grasso finds Van Reems like middle of the ice. Van Reems like a wrister just wide off the near post. And the rebound comes into the crease and is held by Morris. All right, nifty little breakout there by the Wildcats freshman line. Once again, uh, Brendan Van Reems like with a distant shot. Likes to go with a wrister. Trying to catch some bounce off the backboard there. But it was tied up by the netminder. And with this NHL size rink, some of those rebounds come pretty quickly off that end board. Yeah, Maine's used to that with their barn up there. Getting those uh, deflections off the board real quickly. Opposing goaltenders have to know about that and practice that when they get that ice time up there in the Alphond Arena. And a little discussion here, uh, referee and Referee's talking to Glenn Riefenstahl. <laughs> so I wonder if there was a little head collision or something there. And well, Blackburn, I yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what that was about, but Blackburn climbed over the boards, got a pat from Chris Millay. Probably has nothing to do with the conversation you just described. Face off to the right of Morris. And it is won by Mate. But Wise completely stands up. Smith, who tried to go by him. Wise is a pretty big guy to try to go skating through, and Smith just found that out. Eisman the other way for the Wildcats, crosses the main line. Backhand shot from the sharp angle, stopped by Morris. Eisman continues to the play, has it left board. He gets taken down, comes to Boyd, a slapper that gets deflected. That might have hit the pipe, Pete. I think it did hit the outside of the post. Uh, hit the outside of the near post and the shot from the far side by Richard Boyd. It was behind the net. Wise trying to Working away from Perez. Boyd joins the play. It's the left wing corner of the main attack zone. Jamie Hill on the back check. Gets some help from Wise, and now it's at center ice. Surehammer, a two-goal night for him. He backhands into the Wildcat end. Boyd gets to it inside the trapezoid. Boyd skates away from Shea. Works it to Miller before taking a hit from Shea. Bouncing puck around the main line. Cats swat at it. No one handles it cleanly. Puck skirts to the Wildcat end. Cleveland there first. Gets a hit from Shea, who's been pretty aggressive on the forecheck here. And Maine keeps in the zone. Nope, they almost had it in the zone, but Pearson backs it out. Pearson has it taken away by Justin Fergono, who scored his first career goal tonight. Fergono looking for his second goal. A wrist shot as he came in, but this one is gloved fine by Morris, and we have a timeout. 9.25 left in the third. We're setting the stage for a good finish. It's UNH 4 Main three, this is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield.
really appreciates, we appreciate. So happy birthday to Colin Shank and the Wildcats trying to make it a happy one with a 4-3 lead over the Maine Black Bears. 9.25 left in the third. Colin out of Yarmouth, Maine. Went to Yarmouth High School. P. Webbs went the other way. Started in New Hampshire, <laughs> moved to Maine, but I know what color your blood is. It's Texas, blue. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maine trying to come into the Wildcat zone as Brown came across the line, but Cleveland breaks it up and sends it to the main end. This is forces Rob Michael back behind his own goal line. Michael from the near side right. Goes cross ice with it to Brown. Brown chips it to the Wildcat zone. Marks gets there. Can't control. Cleland plays it out in front of his own net. Michael gloves it down above the right circle. Moves it to the right wing boards. Brown. Down low, Byron. Byron behind the cage. Wraps around. Here's a shot from the left side. That one struck the right where the post meets the crossbar and a shot from Hamilton. And the ricochet sends it out of play. That would be called in geometry terms the vertex. <laughs> Yeah, little puck on the uh, vertex there. Uh, the Wildcats catch a break. Well, you know, a few minutes ago, they hit the pipe uh, at one end, and Maine comes and hits the pipe at the other. Maine uh, would love to have that one sneak in, though, being down by a goal. And oodles of time left here. 8.47 left to play. Base off in the New Hampshire zone to the right of Tironi. Cats win the all-important draw. Wise carries behind his own net before finding Van Riemsdyk. Lead pass for Blackburn. Couldn't handle it. Pretty good look as he... Leaked out ahead of the main defense. Black Bears coming the other way now. Using the near boards. It's backhanded to center ice by Smith. Ahead for Perez. Perez looking to keep it alive in the right wing corner. Van Riemsdyk powering by Muehlbauer. And it's out to center. And Black Bears control near their own blue line. Back at his own blue line wise. Goes D to D over to Chanter. Chanter finds Van Riemsdyk at the main line. And he goes from the left point to dump it to the right corner. Surehammer gets there, and the defenseman comes out right side. Maine from our left to our right, not able to get any traction in the Wildcat zone. It's Nazarian skating in, sharp angle shot, stop made, and then Morris forces the stoppage with 7.56 left. We'll have a faceoff. 4-3 Wildcats, four different goal scorers for the Cats. Surehammer has two of Maine's goals, Ryan Smith the other one. Salvaggio, Iserman, Kelleher, Fregona for UNH. Off the face off, it's played off the near glass and out to center by Cleland's reach into the UNH end. Marks will get back there before Shea in the forecheck. Cleland from the trapezoid for Nazarian. He gets bumped off the puck by Hallway. Over to Marks, far boards for Gona. Can't clear the zone. Instead, it's on the left wing side. Played in front, Shea had to just skip over his stick on a centering pass from Pearson that might have set up a good shot. Skates get intertwined as Nazarian and Shea go down, and Maine comes back two on two. Here's a shot by Pearson, saved by Taroni. Rebound, save again as he makes the stop on Nolan Vesey. What a night for Danny Taroni. Well, he's still got about seven minutes left, but uh, holy cow, he has uh, kept the Wildcats in the lead so far. Scrappy play between the pipes, brought to you by Direct Capital, division of CIT Bank, for being scrappy is a core principle. Direct Capital making small business lending remarkable and a proud employer of UNH alumni. Learn more, directcapital.com slash UNH. 6.45 and counting, 4-3 in favor of UNH as the puck goes out of play. Don't forget, there's more Wildcat action on the network tomorrow. New Year's Eve, women's basketball. UNH home against Dartmouth. A 1 o'clock tip. Jim Janot and I at the pregame show from Lundholm Gym beginning at 12.30. And happy early New Year, 2017. <laughs> Can't wait. The year of Webster, Murphy, and Boss. We hope. I like that. All right, face off in the main zone. As Aaron reminds us, she won't be here for the first few games. So Mahaney as well. Enough room for everybody to enjoy 2017. All right, Maine controls the puck on the Wildcat end of the ice. Right wing corner, but Wise stands in between two Black Bears and works it up the boards to Salvaggio. And this allows the Cats to break out. Salvaggio will flip it over Michael, then chase after it in the right wing corner. Salvaggio gets there first. A couple of Black Bears around him. Kelleher pressed against the wall by Lacroix, but fights to get free. Still working with the puck. Salvaggio battles. McNicholas there. Back to the point. Marks tries to flip one in. It bounces off the redirect. Kelleher behind the net. Kelleher backhands in front. Shot. Score! A beautiful feed from Tyler Kelleher. 
And the score makes it 5-3 Wildcats. Jason Salvaggio, his second of the night. Now ah, that was what the doctor ordered right there for the Wildcats. They establish a good forecheck on the dump in initially by Salvaggio. They get some forecheck and some good touches of the puck in the corner. And then a little backhand pass by Tyler Kelleher. A little blind one, but he knew where Salvaggio was in the slot about 18 feet out. And he rips it. And the Wildcats have reestablished the two-goal lead. Tyler Kelleher was looking at the UNH band and he delivered the pass completely behind him, 180 degrees. Eyes in the back of his head for Kelleher, a three-point night against Maine. The senior just feasts on the Black Bears. He came into the game leading the country with 19 assists. He has two more today, and he has five goals and four assists in three games against Maine this year. Yeah, he's having an amazing season. Starting off the second half in the right way. Yeah, he did. He was looking at the band there and wondering why there's no sousaphone there tonight. <laughs> he probably had a chance to ask them, and he still delivered the picturesque, beautiful pass to Salvaggio. I was so mesmerized by the pass, it took me a moment to locate who actually was the recipient in Salvaggio. He knows what skating with Tyler Kelleher means to his career. Two goals in the game for Jason. His first two-goal game since the UMass game, November 18th. 5-3 Wildcats, 5-15 left here in the third period, trying to beat the hated Black Bears for the third time here in the month of December. Now, still a long ways to go, and this main team is not going to stop. They're going to they're gonna battle the whole way. We saw that up in Orono when the Wildcats got a late two-goal lead. No question about that. Maine has come back from a couple of deficits in this game. They were down 1-0, tied it, down 2-1, to one, tied it. Down 4-2 to two and got very close to tying it, but now 5-3, a little bit of breathing room thanks to Salvaggio's second of the night and 11th of the season. Man the other way. Robbins tips it from the point, into the, uh, from the slot rather, into the right wing corner. Goes out to the far corner now. Chancer, he can't clear it. Chance for the Black Bears. Passing up on a shot was Brown as he was open in the high slot. Instead tried to go to Byron down low right side. Wise and Chancer working hard to dislodge the puck from the Black Bears. But again, Cam Brown takes it away. Here's Robbins, works it across to Byron, his shot. Save made by the sprawling, completely split Danny Taroni. Well, Robbins sets up Lane Byron for that. Again, on another Wildcat turnover. And if Byron's not going to bury that one, and he didn't get enough wood on it, then you just have to say it's not your night, man. I'm sorry, you got some excellent players out there. Byron is a, is a super player, and that's one of the toughest lines in the league that the Cats are going to deal with all season. But if you can't bury that one, because half the net was wide open on the good pass, it's just not your night sometimes. But moments after you had said it, Maine proved it true. I mean, they are skating well. They're getting to loose pucks. They're forcing turnovers. So this final four minutes... Anything but comfortable, 5-3 Wildcats lead. Lacroix back to Hamilton from the high slot. Shot, that was redirected, but goes wide off the near side. To the right wing boards. Cleland and Lacroix, puck goes off the side. Taroni's just playing a pretty good game. Smith tried to shoot it from right along the right goal line. Never did get through to Taroni, and now it's cleared out by the Wildcats to the Black Bear end. Yeah, sometimes it's not your night because the opposition's goaltender is well as they say standing on his head Danny's had a fantastic game Black Bears having their own end of the ice on the stick of Shea and Sherhammer he's having a fine game as well working into the zone is VC VC with a forehand shot that goes in the left circle but is wide to the right corner Battle for the puck right in front of the line as Muehlbauer can't keep in. Blackburn looking for Grasso on the lead pass out of his extension. So it's Surehammer. Under three minutes to play, we'll start keeping an eye on Matt Morris, the main netminder who did not start this game but replaced Rob McGovern, who was removed with, after playing 25 minutes and 58 seconds. McGovern surrendered three goals. Cats have scored two against Morris. Brown into the Wildcats on left wing side for Gona with a check to take him off the puck. And it's out to center ice for Gona. Can't control. It's a bouncing puck. Settled down now by Becker. Or make it Robbins. Robbins crosses the line, but can't get much farther. Becker to it with Robbins. And Maine has to retreat deep in their own zone. 
And they'll reset as Patrick Hallway begins moving up ice left side. Hallway receives the return pass from Becker. Now angles left as he crosses into the Wildcat zone. Using the backboard, looking to get it to Byron, who overskates it. And Nazarian allowed to push it out to neutral ice. Under two minutes to play. 5-3 Wildcats. Maine moves into the zone. Here's Brown with a quick wrister and another stop by Danny Taroni. As Cam Brown got to the high slot, he had marks there, so it wasn't a clear look. But Taroni makes what I believe would be his unofficial 33rd save. Yeah, Cam Brown's going to have to have a, a little more juice on that or uh, get a little bit closer if he's going to get it by Taroni at this stage of the game. Good defense straight up by Cam Marks. Wildcats will take that here as it slows it down. 151 left to play. Wildcats need about three more good shifts as Maine is going to call a timeout here. We'll take it as well. 151 left in the third. It's UNH 5, Maine 3. Don't go away. This is Wildcats. Years. Can't wait for tomorrow night. Be smart, but have fun, and certainly check out that women's basketball game, UNH and Dartmouth. We want to see you back at the Whittemore Center for men's hockey Friday night, 6 o'clock puck drop. All right, it's youth day. UNH against UMass Lowell. Get your tickets now at unhwildcats.com or 603-862-4000. Great to be back here at the SNHU Arena, though. Lloyd Dowdy and all the rest of the fine folks at the arena. Looking forward to seeing them in the regionals, which UNH hosts this March. 5-3 Wildcats. Net is empty as off the timeout, Morris has been pulled. So the Wildcats, my goodness, the stick went flying high in the air. Hit off the top of the glass and went out of play. I've never seen that. All right, anyway, Shea from the right side. Shea shot wide. I've never seen it done unintentionally like that. <laughs> I saw something like that on the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> All right, so a fan in the front row is thrilled. The young lady has a, a stick. But meanwhile, play continues. 120 left in regulation. I don't know whose stick it was, but they have another one now. All right, McNicholas using the near glass plate to center ice. Silvaggio. Silvaggio gets to the blue line. He works it across to Kelleher. Wide open net. He shoots and he scores. Silvaggio sets up Kelleher. It's Kelleher's second goal of the game. Those two have combined for four goals. And it's 6 3 UNH. Well, Salvaggio gives up the opportunity for the hat trick. Decides to give his line mate a second goal, so they're both going to uh, end up with a score line of two goals and two assists here tonight. As uh, Patrick Hallway, uh, the defenseman for Maine, was angling off Salvaggio, so it turned out to be the real smart play. And the Wildcats are going to double up Maine, 6-3 to three with a minute and seven left. And it looks like the Cats are going to get a good start to the second half of the year here. Oh, they love the yurt in Manchester. Hoping to come back here for the NCAA Regionals. Tickets are on sale now. Northeast Regional will be here March 25th, 26th weekend. And find out more at unhwildcats.com. Morris is back in net as Maine basically waving the white flag. Wildcats looking for more, though. As from behind the net, Jamie Hill tried to center it for Eiserman, and the Black Bears come the other way. Malcolm Hayes into the zone. Boyd checks him against the glass right wing corner. Down to 30 seconds remaining. That'll be a fine end to 2016 for UNH. You know, their last game before Christmas was not what they wanted, but this one is exactly what they wanted. Well, they found an opponent here that, uh, you know, is skating with as much energy as the Dartmouth Big Green did, but. Wildcats were able to put some goals home early. Here's a goal put home from the mid slot by Hallway. He 
had plenty of congestion in front of Taroni, and with 9.7 seconds left, Patrick Hallway, the freshman from Cohasset, Massachusetts, scores his third of the year, and it's now 6-4 to four Wildcats. Well, he's a 6-4, 201-pound defenseman. Draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings. Showed what a uh, quick little wrist shot that he has. I think he rang it off the underside of the crossbar, hurt a little metal. It's inconsequential here as the Wildcats have a two-goal lead. Six to four. The final seconds will tick off. And Maine, as a true rival, battles to the final horn by scoring that goal with under 10 seconds left. But too little, too late. The Wildcats end 2016 with a 6-4 win over Maine, and they win the Riverstone Classic at the SNHU Arena. With this non-conference victory, the Wildcats improve to 9-7-2 overall, while Maine slips to 7-10-3, and, and the Wildcats 3-0 against Maine in the 2016-17 season. And as the team shake hands, this is probably the last time they will see each other, barring a Hockey East postseason series. A Hockey East post-game show is coming your way next, brought to you by Bud Light, a proud partner of UNH Hockey, reminding all fans, enjoy the game and drink responsibly. UNH wins at 6-4. Stay with us for highlights, scores, and a whole lot more. This is Wildcat Hockey from Learfield. <laughs>